women, Kansas. I didn't play on the wall slowing me down that much. I've always been one of his biggest fans, certainly not anymore. I felt the importance of this race, no doubt. The statement win for Chase Elliott. The Kansas Speedway debuted in 2001 and has delivered action ever since for the NASCAR Cup Series. This weekend, second race of the 2022 playoffs and on tap this afternoon, qualifying following a 20-minute practice session. Weather today has been very interesting. It cooled down a lot from yesterday. These cars haven't seen the track yet, though, so they'll deal with it as it is. Just under 70 degrees as we get things rolling here this afternoon. Hello, everyone. So glad you could join us here today with a couple of Kansas Speedway veterans, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Burton. I'm Dave Burns. We'll talk about everything you're going to see this afternoon. Jeff, I want to start with what we saw last week, the beginning of the playoffs. Crazy Darlington leading into this week. Yeah, it really was. Darlington lived up to his name. The Southern 500 has always been tough. Well, it was Sunday as well. A lot of drivers had problems, had a lot of impacts, had some, uh, some forced errors, some unforced errors, but it's left a lot of them with some room to make up. And they're coming to a racetrack, Jr., that... Uh, you've got to be willing to put it right on the wall at points in this race. And, of course, if you make a mistake, mm. then you get you don't get a Darlington stripe, you get a Kansas stripe, but nonetheless you can do damage to your car. Yeah, this is a racetrack I think the drivers love to come to because you can move around. There's grooves all over the place. You're going to run right against the apron, all the way against the wall in the corners. So to have that versatility in the track to be able to move around in five speed is good. But over the last couple of times we've been here, we're seeing that top get more and more mm. dominant. We're seeing more and more drivers understanding how to run that high groove. So that that is going to make passing much, much more difficult to try to find speed lower on the racetrack and get around these guys on the fence. We're in the high groove up here in the booth. We're going to go down to our low groove and our veteran Dale Jarrett. Hey, DJ. Hey, good morning, guys. And, uh, yeah, very windy, cloudy day here. Uh, extremely cool. Uh, so this racetrack does tend to change a lot uh, with that sunshine just being on. It doesn't have to be that hot to make a big difference, but I think these drivers are going to encounter some things as they get out on the track, uh, especially down in turns one and two uh, as the wind blows down the front straightaway. Could affect them in the middle of the corner there. So it'll be an interesting session here as they get their cars ready for qualifying laps here shortly. Practice coming up. They'll go in two groups, and then they'll qualify. William Byron getting ready. What can he do today at Kansas? Unbelievable the number of playoff drivers that have had problems tonight. Take it to the truck. We didn't have it tonight. Everyone is already pushing hard. Had I made a mistake? I thought we were going to have another DNF. This levels the playing field. That wasn't smoldering on the fourth car. That was a bomb fire. The 18 is blowing up. Had a great car and don't come out with anything to show for it. That's what I really hate about it. Oh, you talk about dramatic. That was last week at the Darlington Raceway. The playoffs are underway. Some points rich drivers came away in the middle of the pack. And some made up ground in that second car in line down there coming off pit lane. <laughs> Eric Jones, the non-playoff driver, he came home with the victory trophy. Cars rolling onto the track now. They'll have 20 minutes to tune them up for qualifying. Jeff, you were just pointing at the 18 still on pit lane. Yeah, Kyle Busch, he did not roll right out on the racetrack. They had truck race last night, ARCA practice this morning. So I'm assuming that team is a little concerned about the rubber that's on the racetrack. So they're just going to wait this out for just a few laps. There's Eric Jones, last week's winner. He will follow this format, as will the other cars in uh, group a and then they'll go to group b then single car qualifying for a lap top five from each group advance to the final round get to run for the pole what a weekend for jones it didn't come out of nowhere jeff right he'd won there before at darlington he knew what it took to get done but for that team what a breakthrough what a time yeah, one there before, and Eric Jones and his team, they showed strength all year long. This is not a surprise that they were up front. Late in the race, Junior, Eric Jones put her on his shoulder and beat one of the very best at Darlington in Hamlin. Yeah, I mean, Hamlin is one of the best, but Jones has a, a great track record at that racetrack as well. So giving him that track position at the end, I think the team had the confidence that they could do it. They had pace in their car all weekend. Awesome to see that 43, Richard Petty, and all that history go to victory lane again. 
He will drop down to the apron and bring it to pit lane where we will find Kim Kuhn. Hey, Kim. Hey, Dave. And to DJ's point, we are watching the weather as are the teams. You can see I'm in my jacket here. Significantly cooler than it's likely to be tomorrow. Overcast as well as also paying attention to the wind. And that's unique to Kansas compared to other racetracks. In fact, so much so, teams told me the wind can blow one direction during the practice day, a completely different direction during the race. And it actually will upset the balance of the race car. So it's something they have to factor in as they prepare for tomorrow's race. And then, Burton, to your point, the ARCA cars on the track earlier, completely different type of rubber. Drivers being warned by their crew chiefs about that rubber. In fact, Cliff Daniels told Kyle Larson he expected to be very slimy, is how he described that ARCA rubber. So a couple things to watch here in the early goings of practice for these cup cars. Christopher Bell on the track right now at the top of the board. One of the best guys to to pay attention to at a track like this where you run the high line. I think the dirt guys seem to run that high line better than most. A lot of guys with dirt experience like Reddick, Larson, Christopher Bell know how to enter the corner, know how to feed the throttle to really maximize speed on corner exit. Dale Jr., how did you find your way to the high side? Because you were a high side runner, but you didn't have all that dirt racing background. Yeah, I mean, I... I I was lucky, I guess, trying to, uh, you know, trying to move around. I was always uh, open to move around and try to find different lines that were going to find speed. A lot of drivers do that. Some are really, you know, stick to itive and, hey, man, the, this is a bottom line racetrack. I'm not moving. You really got to talk them out of that groove and up the racetrack or to a different line. You got to tell them about other drivers that are making speed. Uh, but I knew, you know, once I started to learn this high line and how it would work at certain racetracks, I was always trying to get there first. And because when it's not really rubbered in, there'll be a little bit more speed. You're the, also the first one putting the rubber down on the racetrack up mm. there, so it can do a little bit of a damage to that first or second set of tires. But with everything that's happened here this weekend, all the practices, the truck race, there's a lot of rubber in that groove up there. And it actually hearing some of the drivers and some of the information we're getting that might be the best place to run for tire uh, life and, and take care of your tires. You see the rubber on the racetrack right up against the wall. Some, some are thinking that the bottom groove may be the more abrasive groove on the racetrack. Now in three and four, as you watch Kyle go through there, he's running a little bit lower. That, you know, we saw Kurt Busch win the race here running a little bit lower than Kyle Larson earlier this year. So, Drivers have had to find speed off the wall. Really, everyone can go to the wall and pick up a couple tents. So everybody goes there. It's fast. It's free. Speed, right? So, But how do you move forward? You have to be able to get your car to handle in the groove that the 18 car is running now. About a lane, lane and a half, two lanes low in three and four. So you can be able to get up underneath guys and try to make passes. Otherwise, you'll never be able to pass anybody, even a slower car. It's difficult to pass if they're running that high line, taking away your air and all the things. So this uh, track has a little progressive banking, so that's why that also aids that high groove as well to make it a little quicker. He's Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jeff Burton sits next to me. I'm Dave Burns bringing you practice preceding qualifying for the NASCAR Cup Series from Kansas Speedway. They'll go in two groups. This is Group A. And one driver who wants to overcome a big loss last week is Chase Elliott. His issues left him last on the lineup at the end of the night. Yeah, you can see right there, Chase Elliott said he made a mistake getting into turn one. Car came around on him, and unfortunately for the 14 car, Briscoe, he had nowhere to go. So that's these guys tried to fix it, but it just way too much damage. See the lower control arm, upper control arms, all that was bent, broken. Just could not get it fixed in time. And those are the kind of things that we will see at racetracks where you get rewarded for pushing hard, right? You, if you, you can take a choice, you can kind of ride around, take it easy, or you can push and try to make lap time. And of course, the fear is that you push hard enough and you end up getting in a wreck or a crash. And that's exactly what happened. And now they've got a little bit, they, you know, they had some points to, to lean on, but they, they are not afforded. Uh, another mistake in the playoffs. It leaves them ninth out of the 12 who will advance to the next round, just 14 points above the cut line. Let's check in with his teammate. Kim's caught up with him. 
And that would be William Byron. William had a solid weekend last week at Darlington, but now we're talking Kansas. You have the benefit of being in the second group. What kind of things are you paying attention to, especially your teammates out there during this first round of practice? Yeah, just um, kind of looking at what the, the five and the nine are doing so far. It looks like the five looks pretty good so far, so try to take a little bit of notes from, from them and apply it to our car. And, uh, Line-wise, this looks like the top is is uh, preferred right now, which is kind of what we expected. But um, yeah, just trying to look at throttle time and kind of see how much brake or or if any brake. And um, so so yeah, I think we'll have a good idea when we go out. What kind of resources are you guys using coming into this weekend? Because the spring race, you guys unfortunately had some damage to the underbody, not a great notebook. So how did you prepare for this weekend, not having an you know advantageous yeah. spring race? Yeah, I mean. The, the setups have migrated a lot since the spring, so I don't I don't know what we really take from the spring, um, other than just um, the way this car feels around this racetrack. But overall, the the setup migration and things have changed so much since then. It's hard to take many notes. Let William Byron get back to uh, paying attention to what his teammates. Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott are doing out there during that first round of practice. It's a great opportunity to watch Larson try to work around the 12 of Blaney. Larson a little quicker, but he can't run in the tire tracks of the 12 to be able to have good arrows, so he has to run a little bit down the racetrack and try to find a way around Blaney, and he dives at the bottom, middle of three and four here, and you can see trying to close that gap a little bit here. Can he get to the quarter panel? This is what we'll see in the racing. Almost draws, draws alongside. Let's listen to some five radio. You want him to keep running there? You want him to back up? I want to see if we can pass him, and then if we get ahead of him, what does that look like? So I'm, I'm not sad about running in traffic right here. This is going to be real for tomorrow. So the balance of the car may be a little different behind the 12 versus in front of it, Jeff. Yeah, and that's what you know. You see right now the the, the Penske of the of Ryan Blaney. They don't have the speed they want. Larson clearly quite a bit quicker was able to get by him. Now, now, although with all the data and all the information you have, you kind of know where you're beaten, but as a driver, you want to see it. You want to see exactly where it is that I need to be better, and right now, Blaney's taking advantage of that. The only driver in the... Uh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong times there. One of the drivers in the 32nd bracket, Christopher Bell, quickest so far, was on pole here in May. So the 20 still quick, but here's Larson going third. And looking good. You see Larson, he got out there and got free air, and now he just went a 31-12, and Blaney, you know, he was quite a bit slower that lap. Chase Elliott working around Harrison Burton. Harrison getting some lessons here from a driver who runs quick at Kansas. But it's like you said, Dale Jr., you've got to be able to run in the line that they're not in. You can't drive right through them. Got to be able to make a pass at some point. So you see these drivers trying that one or one and a half grooves off the wall. Yeah, I think Kurt Busch showed us exactly how to do that perfectly in this race earlier this year where I didn't think it, anyone was going to be able to pass the leader of the race late on the inside. And Kurt worked and worked and worked and finally made that pass happen. And they make the pass now differently than they used to, Junior. Now you have to make the pass on corner entry. It used to be when we raced, you had to beat somebody off the corner. You beat them down the straightaway. Today, you got to kind of break even with them, beat them a little bit off the corner. But when you get underneath them, you got to drive into the corner and almost take their lane away and overdrive the entry. It's a, it's a different, completely different way to pass with this car. This car, you don't get loose underneath a guy like you used to. So you got to just almost take advantage of them on corner entry. Good look at Bubba Wallace, sporting the 45 number. I guess you would say this is not the car that won with Kurt in May because that's being driven by Ty Gibbs, the 23. They switched numbers last week. But Bubba is not uh, looking too shabby right here. Second quick. Yeah, as we look at Bubba here, yeah, he had a great race here earlier this year. It had some problems in the pits that cost him a lot of time put him at the back of the pack worked his way all the way back inside the top 10 when i look at this race and and thinking about who the real possibilities of an upset winner tomorrow if you will i think this is a driver that can get that job done we saw last week that a non-playoff driver took advantage of a situation and went and won the race there it could very easily happen here tomorrow afternoon too with especially with bubba wallace 
Can't disagree, DJ. And here are some Toyota numbers back in May where they finished. You see that Kurt was the winner. Still recovering from his injuries, unfortunately, from a practice crash, so is not in the playoffs. Brother Kyle was third. Denny Hamlin was fourth. The other thing about speed and the lines, guys, that they talk about is the beginning of the run versus later in the run, right? When the tires are fresh, they've just gone on the race car, Jeff, that's an opportunity to make some lap time on the lower group, is it not? Oh, yeah, for sure. That's going to be the decision to make is when do you move to the top of the racetrack on high grip, new tires, cooler conditions, just the shortest way around the racetrack, right? But then as tires start to wear out, speed starts to bleed off a little bit, then you want to move around. Now, we have not seen a ton of loss on speed. It's not anything like we saw last weekend at Darlington uh, where you'd, you'd lose two seconds. We're not seeing anything like that here. There is some tire fall off, which is why they're moving to the top, but it's not excessive. So about, yeah, about you know less than a second from lap one to lap 13. Last week at Darlington, we were seeing all uh, approximately two seconds in that amount of time. Listen to the throttle, not very much off throttle for the 47 here at Stenhouse. He runs the high side. He's a little shallow on entry. If you're running that high line, you, you, you try to open up and get up against the wall on entry, but he's a little shallow on entry. It's like with the steering wheel, the car's not quite a bit, quite as comfortable as he'd want to be, to be more aggressive with that arc on entry, but just to throttle quickly. And maybe a little nervous in practice, you know, a little nervous to set it right there up against the wall. You'll try the line here. And you hear the difference in the RPMs running that bottom groove, the lower RPMs. That's why the top is faster because you run more RPMs. And so basically you might not, you know, you're not making time in the corner running that high line. It's when you get onto the next straightaway, you're running faster at the exit point of the corner and you gain on the guys down the straightaway that ran the bottom because they bogged the car down, run a lower RPM in the middle of the corner. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. had a nice run in May to eighth for JTG Doherty Racing. Big Brad Doherty in the house this weekend. He'll be joining us for our shows this downshift. weekend. A little downshift right there for the 47, trying to bring those RPMs up in the middle of the corner on that bottom groove. And what's interesting is the steering wheel. I don't I don't really know where, where his hands are, that white part of the steering wheel. I've not seen that before. Not sure, real sure what he's got going on there. Volleyball players tape their fingers. Drivers tape their steering wheel, Jeff. Yeah, I, I, I've not seen that. <laughs> Stenhouse done for the moment. He is 13th out of the 18 cars that have been on track for Group A. You see the clock winding down in the upper left, just five minutes remaining to get things where you want them before minor changes and a qualifying run that follows. Pretty interesting. We talked about Blaney needing a little bit of speed, but as this run has gone on, he's just sat there and ran the same lap time over and over and over. He is second fastest on the 10 lap average second on the 15 lap average not a lot of cars ran 15 in a row but we saw how much faster larson was when he got to him brian was 12th in the may race scored a couple of stage points before coming to the checkers And just a reminder of where he sits on the playoff leaderboard. He is sixth. 20 points to the good. And that would be to 13th. Remember, 16 drivers currently in the playoffs. This is round one, race two. Three will be eliminated. Sorry, four. 13, 14, 15, 16 will be out of the playoffs after Bristol next week. Just nicely up against the cushion there, against the wall. And that last lap for Blaney, a 31-41 versus his best of a 30-38. So a little over a second of fall off during the run. Ken, what you got on the 18 here? 
Well, he came on the radio after he brushed the wall. He said, guys, I hit the wall. It's not bad, but I'm going to bring it to you. Well, we have not seen Kyle Busch in the pits. And as you see, the onboard right now from Kyle Busch. So apparently he changed his mind about the team having to look it over. Probably going to run out the clock here with it only being less than three minutes left. So they seem unconcerned right now on the 18 car. Kim, thanks for that update. Big concern for Toyota this week was, of course, looking into the engines, finding out what they could find out after problems for Martin Truex Jr. and if this 18 the, car. If he hit the wall. He Not much? Barely did. <laughs> I'm looking around this racetrack, you know, and I can't really see any anything, any evidence on the, on the fence. No evidence really on the side of the car that I can see, Jeff. Yeah, let's get a close-up right here. I don't see anything. You ever think you did and you actually didn't? Yeah, I mean, there's basically <clears throat> with the uh, exhaust, when you get really close to the wall, the pitch changes, you know that you were, you know, you, you, you might, if you don't feel anything, you know you got close. You know you got within a half inch or a, couple, a quarter inch because you can hear the change of the pitch of the exhaust hitting the wall next to you. It'll get your attention for sure. Kyle carries on, brings it to pit road. Under two minutes remaining in this practice session. His teammate, Christopher Bell, is still quickest. Yeah, quick, quickest on the board, but also probably, I think right now, the best car. I think Christopher Bell, a little bit better than his teammates from what I'm seeing, looking at lap time, individual laps. Uh, and no surprise if you talk to him. He feels like they've got the most speed in that Joe Gibbs camp. There's Seabell. And he's got a car in front of him, the two of Cindric. So he's trying to figure out how to get around Cindric quite a bit quicker than Austin. See what he does down here in the corner. Runs a little bit lower, dives down in the corner, tries to take that pass on entry, just like you said, Jeff. He's going to slide up the track a little bit on corner exit because of that hard entry. Waves to Cindric. Thanks, man, for letting me get around there. Cindric's going to have a little practice time back. See if he can get back around the 20. That may be a tall task right now, Cindric. You can see 17th on the board in one lap. Well, you can Fast see time. the center of the corner is where the speed is. The, it, it looks like they kind of break even on corner entry, but when they get right to the center of the corner, that 20 car is just able to roll more speed. Doesn't necessarily mean he's on the gas as quick, but maybe not having to use as much brake. Could be in the throttle sooner, but definitely center of the corner roll speed is really good on that car. His teammate Denny Hamlin right here and not carrying the FedEx colors this weekend, so we'll have to pay attention to this car. Acumatica on board this weekend for the 11 camp. Always a guy you expect to see in the top five, top three late in the going here at Kansas. I mean, somebody's really slow off turn four here. Yeah, it looked like the 47 car, I believe. Stenhouse has had some contact and you see the damage. The car's got a little flat right rear tire. Looks like he's uh, hit the wall there. A little damage to the right rear quarter panel. Exactly like last time. Okay, so I'm looking at the wall in turn three and four. There's lots of scuff marks entering three all the way to the middle of three and four. Multiple marks up there on the wall. So a lot of contact for the 47 here. And I'm, I thought when we were riding on board, he looked uncomfortable entering the corner. He looked a little twitchy on the steering wheel entering the corner. He said exactly like the last time here. The first race here, early in the process of this new car, there was a fair amount of tire issues. I don't know if potentially they had some kind of tire issue because it, he's in the wall really early. Yep. Those were left rears, though, weren't they, Jeff? Left this rears. Oh, it, right yep. there. Yeah hear the tire pop but did that seem like the right rear now Goodyear has done testing and brought a new right side tire to both Pocono and Michigan after they confirmed it that's on the right side the left is new that's only had confirmation tests so this is a new combination all the way around that then how everybody's attention yes, everybody in the garage we have really not had that many tire problems lately with some changes
Back at Kansas Speedway, Group A has completed their 20-minute practice session. Group B is getting ready to head out on the track, and in just a little while, they will all attempt to qualify for pole position for the 400-miler tomorrow. Here's your top 10 in speeds. We talked a lot about Christopher Bell. Another Toyota Bubba Wallace was second. First Chevy, Kyle Larson. First Ford, Chris Buescher in one lap times. Uh, biggest drama of the session was Ricky Stenhouse Jr. with wall contact. Kim has caught up with him. Ricky out of the car, uh, had a good practice run going there. Then at the end, what happened? A little right rear trouble. Yeah, we um, you know made a decently long run uh, and then came in and made some adjustments to our Sunny D Camaro. And I was actually pretty happy with uh, the way it was driving. We just tried to make it a little bit better and uh, felt like we made it better. And then uh, all of a sudden going in uh, turn three, we blew a right rear kind of. Kind of similar to, you know, the spring race when we blew a left rear, but we had a really good run in the spring starting at the back. Uh, we should still be able to qualify and, and get a decent lap in, but um, all in all, I was really happy with how I was driving. Any concern for the race tomorrow, seeing a tire issue like this and knowing you had one also in the spring? I don't really know what you said, but um, we've got you know, a different, you know, tire here uh, this go around and we feel like we were conservative on you know, air pressures and cambers and things like that just because it was a, a, a new tire, but I guess we found the limit of that one. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., uh, as he mentioned, it's gotten loud. That second group has started practice. Did want to let you guys do uh, No, I did a surveillance of kind of the pit road areas and the guys that went in group one. Larson also had just a tiny, tiny scuff on his right rear as well. So, so one thing I found really interesting in his comments is that they're planning on qualifying. So that car, think about that. That car blew a right rear tire getting into turn three, went up and smacked the wall. You could see uh, the paint of the wall, the concrete in the right front wheel also. So that car hit hard, and he thinks they can get that thing fixed to qualify. Uh, that, that's going to be, uh, I would be surprised if that's the case, but they could make it. It sounded, I mean, he, it sounded like he wasn't going to run for pole, but he was going to get a decent lap, Jeff, at least to know and settle in on, on what the car was like. Yeah, they go out third in qualifying, so not much time. Not a lot of time to get that thing ready. Dale Jr., if you were in this format, would you appreciate being in Group A or Group B? Group A uh, is on track first. Uh, group B gets a chance to kind of look things over. Where would you rather be? Yeah, you definitely want to be in the second group because more than likely you're probably going to have a teammate or somebody you can lean on in that first group that's going to kind of stumble on to some of the surprises of the day and and some of the challenges that are in the track, uh, whether it be weather or new imperfections in the track or, you know, all these teams run the same sim to prepare their cars during the week. Um, maybe, uh, you know, your teammate went out there and found out they, they're on the splitter too hard or, or wait, the, the car's a little too high. Your team can then make the adjustments and and sort of take that out of the equation and go, get right, you know, get right to work. And it, it, it allows you to get more done in that limited time you have to practice so I think it's a great advantage to be in the second group saw Joey Logano there for a minute look on with a strong finish of fourth at Darlington from pole this Tyler. driver Tyler Reddick he uh, had a strong run as well second Jeff yeah I was just getting ready to say you know Tyler Reddick on top of the board right now uh, I think this is the guy you have to watch this week he loves running the top very comfortable up there can drive a car that's some others aren't comfortable with, meaning the back of the car, you know, he can tolerate a little bit of looseness. And uh, you see him just making sure his belts are tight, but he can tolerate a little bit of looseness with the back of the car that some others can't. And I think that's a major advantage at a race track like this, Junior. Yeah, ready? Checking those belts because, you know, you got them tight on pit road and then you go out on the racetrack and the G-forces and kind of settles you and pushes you down into the seat. You have to get back to those belts again and make sure everything's good. Really interesting to watch Reddick here. Watch how smooth he is. You know, you were talking about the speed uh, that you're running and 
He's not even challenging the wall yet. And I think this is a driver, when you talk about coming to a place where you have to run right up against the wall, just think back to his Xfinity championship that he won at Homestead. He was the one that was challenging the wall sooner than everybody else during those races and willing to take that risk and that opportunity. And I think he showed everybody just how good he is at doing that. So no surprise to see him up here. But I think there's room and probably speed that he has left once he decides it's time to challenge that upper roof. Yeah, I like how you said that, DJ, you know, challenge that wall. If you watch his throttle inputs to green lights on the left side of the screen, he never comes all the way out of the gas. And, and there was more out of the gas that lap than any lap we've watched so far. This is, he's coming around to take his eighth lap right here and still able to never be all the way out of the throttle in, in three and four. Hey, Jeff and Junior, I was going to ask you guys, whenever you have a win situation like what we have here, where it is directly down one straightaway that is helping, and then the, obviously here it's down the front straightaway, and then in your face going down the back straightaway, it, did you drive the two differently because of that? Like, I, I never thought that the extra speed, what little bit it might help me down the front straightaway, I could still drive to my points there, but I thought the way that it was hurting me on the entry going down the back straightaway, that I could drive the car a little further in there because I had a little bit of help of slowing the car down. I don't know how you guys approach that. I I never, you know, I would just go out and drive the car without thought about the wind and try to find the limit of the grip and get into a, a repetitive sort of motion of where I'm going to lift for each corner, and it's going to be different depending on how the car balance is. But one of the things, DJ, that I always found difficult as a driver was to remember how the wind was affecting the handling. And so if you've got wind pushing you into a corner, uh, you're going to be maybe a, a little tighter into the middle of that turn. So as the wind, as your car comes around the corner and the wind now turn is in the left side door pushing you across the racetrack, you're not going to have as much front grip or balance in the car. And I could never really remember or, or keep that in mind. So when I'm already, you know, talking to the crew chief, I'm like, you know, it's, it's really good into one, and it turns so much better down there. But in three and four, I'm just plowing. And they're like, you know, I can do a lot of things, but I can't change the wind. <laughs> and I'm oh, yeah, well, yeah, it is windy. and that's, So that's something that you have to kind of keep in mind as a driver when you're trying to get the car better some things you just can't fix because of that win and 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 the drivers that can remember that and be thinking about that as they're giving feedback in a very abbreviated practice are the really sharp drivers i have to admit that i didn't really buy the win thing i had a, an engineer talking to me one day about the wind and i'm like man come on <laughs> and, and but he was right and and when i started paying attention to it because i was like you i you know just drive to the grip of the car no matter what is happening and I really started paying attention. I, I did learn how to manipulate that a little bit uh, because when that car, when that air is blowing on the right side of the car, it's making more downforce. It's making more side force. It makes the car drive better. When it's blowing on the left side of the car, it's opposite. It makes it worse. And uh, if, I, if I knew I had that wind helping me, then I started trying to get more on corner entry like DJ was talking about and then trying to feed the throttle more, asking more of the car than I thought I would have been asking of the car if I hadn't recognized the wind. I'm still dwelling on the statement, I can change a lot of things, but I can't change the wind. I'm trying to think if that's more Tony Urie Jr. or Steve Letarte. Uh Probably Steve. I think <laughs> Steve told me that. Love Sounds it. It's like a good country music song. Uh, it does too, yeah. I'll tell you what wasn't good country music last week was how the day wound down for Kevin Harvick, and that was, uh, you'll remember it, this is how his day ended, a surprise flame out of the four, and he parks it and turns one and two. Yeah, we were all puzzled as to why this car, what caused this fire, right? How this happened. And to learn, you know, that a lot of things have you know, been changed. NASCAR's made some rule adjustments to be able to try to keep all of the debris at a track as abrasive as Darlington. A lot of rubber and debris gets built up on the race car. We've seen the headers, you know, contain rubber and debris and catch fire in the past. This is not a new thing, but with this car, it was collecting in bunches, and when it does create a fire, it's it's a big issue. It ends the race for you. And so NASCAR's made some changes to the cars this week, hoping to um, you know improve that situation in a positive way, Kim. That's right. Down here with Chris Busher, or as you like to call him, Christopher Busher. 
He was fourth fastest in his round. Now sixth overall on the board. Big takeaway. The guys in the booth have been talking about this wind. Describe what it's doing to the race car out there. Yeah, three and four is a little treacherous. A um, lot cooler today than we expected, but got some inconsistencies in our balance down there that we're trying to ignore and uh, just dial in for one and two here. Our fast on Mustang has good speed, like we did the first Kansas. Um, without the blown tire in practice. So that's a, a great start. Proud of these guys really rebounding after Darlington. We're in a good spot so far. Got a lot of racing left to do, so we're going to dial in for uh, the fault button here. I like our fire off speed. Going to work a little bit for that long run speed and take uh, take the wind for what it's worth and, uh, and some of the temperature as we look ahead to tomorrow. This is a track where there's multiple grooves, especially with the cooler weather. Have you decided how you're going to attack the racetrack for qualifying? Uh, we're looking through some of that. I have a pretty good idea what what we did and what was good for our speed. Uh, but I think there is something, um, some different options. And looking back to the last race, I think we can we can tune on it some. We go out really early, so we don't have a chance to watch many. And uh, maybe uh, <laughs> maybe we can get that that guess right and, and hit the right line and, and put down a good lap. Good luck. Thank you. You heard it, a little guesswork because they go so early when we go qualifying here at Kansas. One of the things I loved, he said, there's some things happening in three and four we're going to try to ignore. And that says it best about how the wind can affect the car and a driver being smart enough to understand what the issues are that they can improve because of that wind. And trying to ignore them is tough because hmm. you always want to fix the car. You always want to make the car better. Ty Gibbs trying to make this car better for himself. I don't know how much better he needs it. Fifth fast in one lap times. All the Toyotas were really fast here in the spring, and I think the Toyotas have just progressively gotten better uh, with speed. So I expect to see a lot of them in the front of the pack tomorrow. Check in on the Chevrolet camp with Ross Chastain. Yeah, so right now, this is the best race car driver on the racetrack. His speed is just a lot better than everybody else. He's got a lot of long run speed, had good short run speed. He's caught Austin Dillon, and since he's caught him, his speed has bled off some. So now, just like we saw in the first practice, now his mission is, okay, I got to get by Reddick. I got to find a way to get by a car that's we know we're going to have to race against. We know we're going to have to race this car. I'm a little bit quicker, but how do I find a way around him? Chastain, relative lack of experience with most of the drivers in the playoffs here in the Cup Series. Seven starts here at this track. So you see what he's having to do. He's having to make some compromises with his car. So he wants to be a little bit higher. But he can't be because he's in the wake of that eight car. So he's having to offset himself a little bit. See how he's lower in the middle of the corner? That's just trying to get clean air to that race car. Kim, what do you have on those guys? And Jeff, you mentioned him being in the wake of the Reddick machine, and that is by design. They told Ross they wanted him to get in dirty air to see what the car would do, to see what the handling would do, and maneuverability. So drivers always complain about dirty air, but they want a good read on what this car is going to do tomorrow if he finds himself behind other vehicles. Let's check in on the team communications with Ross Chastain. So there you go, to Kim's point, data collected. So that, that's, that's, that's a really interesting comment that he made because what we hear a lot, Junior, is we hear when you, I get to somebody, I get really tight. And what you just heard him say right there was that the whole car loses grip. Right? I'm not really tight, I'm not really loose. It doesn't do anything horrible. It just loses overall grip. And that makes sense to me because you've lost overall downforce. And a lot of times drivers all feel that in the front because it doesn't rotate as well as they want it to, but it just takes the whole car out of the racetrack and doesn't let you attack the, the corner the way you want to. William Byron will be making his 10th start here at Kansas in the Cup Series. Hard to believe it's been that long for this young man. <laughs> that is crazy. I remember him coming here for the first time. We were all young back then, Junior, yeah. right? It's been a Kind of a hit and miss track for him. He's had a couple accidents here. This track sort of can sneak up on you. It looks pretty straightforward in terms of how to get around it. Really wide, a lot of fun, but it is slick and it, it can bite you because you end up getting in, because everybody can run all over the racetrack here, the bottom, the top, wherever. 
on restarts, in a moment you may find yourself in a very, very compromised situation yeah. aerodynamically. And that's happened to him and a few other drivers. We see it in the Xfinity race all the time. Guys getting in the fence off the two on the very start of the race because they go down in there and then they they lose all the aero in traffic. And it can jump up and surprise you. This team though trying to get back on track. They had a they started off the season really well. A lot of speed in the car. Looked like it's going to be a great year. Kind of got in a rut in the in the summer up to this point. Still trying to find the type of speed that they hope that carries them further into the playoffs. Solid race for them last week. Not a great race, but a solid race. Kind of get get their footing back, right? Like at the start of this playoffs, uh, just got to find some speed, but also got to finish the night off. They got caught a little bit. Uh, they got caught on some strategy. Caution came out at the wrong time. That hurt their finish, but they had a very solid, solid night for the Southern 500. Currently second in the playoffs. Byron is 32 points to the good above the cut line. Daniel Suarez, a little interesting dramatic weekend last weekend at Darlington. A little uh, contact with Christopher Bell. They had a, a text conversation back and forth this week, Junior. I don't know if things are settled, uh, but at least they spoke to each other by text. Yeah, Daniel pretty frustrated with how Christopher raced him says that he's going to get Christopher back. So Christopher feels like he's been warned and he's going to be watching his back. Daniel's done a good job. We've seen him have a great speed on the road courses this year. Really, really fast. Now he's starting to develop that pace at all the other racetracks that they hope to find speed at to be more competitive for the playoffs. And Trackhouse was dominant at the start of the year. The only team that was really consistent race to race. Now we're starting to see that from Daniel as well as we look at the replay. And so Christopher gets up the racetrack. There's contact. Christopher gets into the 99, push, pushes him into the wall. Without question, Daniel has every right to be frustrated with how that went down. It, 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 but move on. Yeah. Like, you know, no, no harm, no foul. First race of well, the playoffs. I don't, you listen, in the moment, be mad. I agree. But roll on, man. Like, I, focus on you and your team. I, I hear exactly what you're saying, but not this guy. This guy right here is going to walk up to you on pit road and put you in a headlock. <laughs> he is not going to put up with it. And he's, uh, not, and he's, gonna, he's not going to give – he's not going to let it go and just say, hey, man, you know, don't race me like that anymore. He's going to make a point some way, somehow, so that Bell never puts him in that situation again, DJ. Yeah, I agree. Uh, he, he probably has a good point. There. I just wonder – I was going to ask you guys, so – in my day, there wasn't a lot of texting uh, if I got mad at a driver. And I think if I was in today's world, I'm not sure that the driver could understand how pissed or how mad I might would be about something through a text. I'm not sure there's enough emojis <laughs> or anything else that I can get across there. So my point would be, you were talking about face-to-face -face on, on pit road. That's how I think I would have handled that a, a little bit more, just to make sure that he understands the situation and something is going to transpire from this, and, and I wasn't happy about how that all turned out. Yeah, I, you know, I think face-to-face -face is always better, but I will say this younger generation, you know, they communicate differently, mm -hmm. you know, because of technology. And, I, you know, every driver, to your to your point, both you guys' points, is every driver – uh, reacts to those situations differently. Some just move on. Some never forget. Some get mad. I mean, they all act differently. I, and I think the key for me is Daniel, this is the best year he's ever had in Cup. Don't let something sidetrack that, yeah. right? Now, listen, if you got wrecked and took you out of the race, another story. But that didn't happen. Don't let that sidetrack you. Don't let that become a distraction focus on you and your team i think that what daniel's been through in the last couple of years has hardened him and now that he does have this sort of some roots some stability in his career he's not going to allow these guys to push push him around and he wants to make that clear uh in every example he can so that you know going forward no driver puts him in that situation because they know what's coming and to be fair if you don't take a stand, they will push you around. Yeah. They, if, if you don't, if you let them know that you can be pushed around, they're going to push you around. That's just, they see the weakness and they're going to take advantage of it. 
Alex Bowman standing his ground in practice with just 30 seconds remaining. The 48 car third in single lap time showing up as well on 10 lap averages in third. So that's good news. This team here has a bit of turnover to go through. Greg Ives has announced that he's going to come off the pit box and take a new position in HMS. So there's some uncertainty as far as who the crew chief will be for this car next year. I think that gives Alex an opportunity to to change, to improve, to get better. Even, you know, every time there's a hole or a void open, you've got to look at it as a chance to get better. And uh, this is a big, big position to feel for this 48 car, and it could change the, the future of this team going forward in a big way. Wow. Bumpy entrance to pit road there. Doing a hot entry as he is able to do here at the end of his practice session. And that's this. Yeah, and that, that's why a lot of these guys have to come on the pit road quite slow, Oof. which means they're up on the racing surface slowing down during the race. And everybody in, in you know, under green flag pit stops tomorrow, trying to avoid cars slowing for pit stops is going to be a big deal. Was that the right entry point? Is that the right spot? There's no good spot here. No. It's a yeah. big transition from the banking to pit road. There's no good way to get onto the onto pit road here without yeah. doing some damage to your car. Watching all these guys, they're trying. They're they're making that transition as late as possible, as far around the corner as possible, and so they're up on the racing surface in the way, slowing down, trying to get on a pit road. And we've seen that create some issues. We will keep our eye out for that, Kim. Down here with Eric Amarillo looking at the board, only four laps run. Bottom of the board, obviously an issue. What's the deal? Uh, we don't know. Um, yeah, we took off pit road there with our farmland Ford Mustang, and it just never ran right. Um, don't know if we have a valve train issue or an ECU. Uh, the data looks really weird on the, the ECU sensors. So uh, going to go back to the garage and pull the covers off of it, look at it, dissect some of the data, and see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. But um, Oh, well, we'll have to uh, start from the rear. Without knowledge of what the car is going to do, how does that change your approach for tomorrow's race? Yeah, it changes things drastically because, um, you know, honestly, we can't lean on our teammates too much. We came with something uh, really different kind of out of the box uh, for a setup and, and, you know, ideology on our setup. So can't really go off of their notes too much. We were trying to, to learn something since we weren't in the playoffs, just trying uh, something new and uh, unfortunately didn't get any laps. So we'll have 400 miles to try and figure it out on Sunday. Guys, sounds like we're going to have to follow up with Eric Amarola after they figure out exactly what the problem is on that Ford. Y'all give me a hard time for the way I talk. <laughs> Ideology. It, we'll look it up in break. All right, these Dave, go the, to break with that. <laughs> we were the top, these were the top 10 cars back for qualifying first round from Kansas. Kansas Speedway welcomes the NASCAR Cup Series for the second race of the playoffs this weekend. Big weekend for race fans. Xfinity Racing later today following this qualifying for Cup and then the big 400 miler for these cars tomorrow. Alongside Dale Jr. and Jeff Burton, I'm Dave Burns. So glad you could join us. Kim Kuhn on pit road and Dale Jarrett manning the Peacock pit box this afternoon during qualifying. This will be single lap. They will head out, take the green, see what they can do with one lap. J.J. Yaley will be the first to do it. And all 36 will get their attempt. Take the top five from two different groups, put them out for one more round of 10, and then Burton has run for the pole. That's right, and a little bit of a weather change. It's been yeah. cloudy and overcast all morning. Now we've got the sun popping out. Not sure how long that's going to last. JJ into turn three and four. He's a couple of car widths off the wall there. It's always a bit of a discussion point as to whether drivers are going to utilize the higher of the line choices through three and four. Let's head down to Kim Kuhn. And let's catch up with uh, last week's winner. You saw him just get a fist pump from Chase Elliott. Eric Jones winning the Southern 500. So first, before we talk Kansas, what's this past week been like for you? It's been fun, you know, just seeing everybody in the shop and getting to uh, celebrate a little bit with them was fun. So just proud of everybody in the Focus Factor Chevy and getting that win. And uh, you know, 
know, hopefully the start of uh, some more here this year. Now, I prepared for this session with a jacket, a heavy jacket. Needed it at the beginning of practice. Not sure I need it now. The sun trying to peek out. How is that going to affect your lap here? Yeah, you know, we were pretty free. I hope it tightens this up a little bit. We'll see. It's it's definitely fast right now. It's going to slow down a little bit with the rubber and heat. So hopefully we got it tightened up a little bit and we can uh, go get ourselves a, a good starting spot here. Eric Jones about to climb aboard. As you see, he's going to get on there and make his lap here at Kansas. Nothing like a win if you didn't make the playoffs, guys, right? Oh, yeah, that's a good way to come into the playoffs. It's, it's a horrible feeling when you're not in the playoffs. So here's the accident with Stenhouse into the wall. And now he's out on the racetrack. They've got this car repaired. And I don't know how confident I would be getting down into the <laughs> corner right now, Jeff Burton. But Stenhouse has got the hammer down. But you can see a half a second off of Gregson. So just out there probably just making sure everything's working right, trying to feel anything that he can that might be wrong or incorrect about the way the car drives to be able to give crew chief Brian Patty that information. You know, way out of the throttle, not trying to lay a Q lap down here. Like you said, just kind of a recon lap. Like, what do we have? How's it drive? Anything major? He changed the tape on the wheel. That's a well. better, yeah, that's a better look at that tape you were wondering about, Jeff. Looks like he just beefed his wheel up, give it a little bit of grip. We'll keep our eye on Ricky as he will no doubt be starting near the rear of the field for tomorrow's action. Meanwhile, David Gilliland on track. This is Todd. Oh, sorry, Todd. <laughs> See, there you go. Son Todd in the car. Freudian, it's going to happen. David, love you, miss you. He's around and seeing what Todd can do as a rookie in the series. He's going to come down across this front straightaway, run the shorter route. It's pretty much the same speed Todd ran in practice. He had a good run going last week early. Yeah. Him or David? Sorry. It yeah. was. I know. David was watching. He was, for <laughs> sure. Oh, love it. Chris Busher, his Ford Mustang on track now. Talked to him just a little bit earlier. He was ignoring part of the track and focusing on another. And that line through one and two is, is interesting. Not right on the bottom, but quite a bit lower. And this is common for three and four. We saw guys, you know, like Kevin Harvick and others run this line in qualifying. Now he doesn't cut the front straight away to the finish line. A lot of guys might. It's a good lap. That's a little quicker than he ran in practice. Chris Buescher full of confidence this fall has been most of the year. The 17 has been good. My man Harrison's going to cut that front straight away coming to the green. He's trying to get everything he can. Real aggressive. They got into turn one pretty well. Didn't get off of two as well. Low line through three and four. Harrison Burton will put the 21 car in. That'll be second. And that's quicker than he ran in practice by about a tenth. Kim standing by with Bubba Wallace. And Bubba Wallace had a great run when we were at Kansas uh, in the spring, a tenth place finish. Now you got a different number on the side of your car. What's this weekend been like for you now that you're going after an owner's championship? Honestly, Kim, I've been treating it the same. Uh, just another race. We got nine to go and just uh, giving my best effort each and every time we're on the racetrack. And so things are definitely clicking for the 23 45 group whatever it is but our team's been doing a really good job of just capitalizing and being there in the moment and uh, setting ourselves up for a finish something we struggled with at the beginning of the year so uh it's been fun confidence has been high so time to go show it and qualifying here and you've been nose deep in the data since practice looking at all these different lines have you made a plan for this qualifying run no that's things with race car drivers we never have our mind made up we just go do it <laughs> There you have it. I think we're going to have to wait and find out which line Bubba takes here. Uh, all smiles for he and his team. I'm wondering what you do with if you're a merch person, Dale Jr., you know? You got the 23, you got the 45, they're switching out. I mean, do you double up on everything for the merchandise? <laughs> you, yeah, you'd be pretty creative with all that. Well, Custer got a real aggressive into turn one, wasn't able to keep the car on the bottom, went way up on corner exit. 
This car, man, he has struggled this year. I know he was hoping that things were going to continue to improve, but it's been a difficult season for Cole. SHR has kind of had, had a little bit of a challenge finding the pace in all their cars this year. Fifth for the moment for Cole Custer. You see the cut line there. That's the bubble for Group A to advance to the final round. NASCAR will take five from each Group A and B, and they will be able to run for the pole. And Brad starting to see some more speed from him as this year has progressed. Gave up a little bit of distance in turn one and two, just running a higher line. And it didn't get him, you know, it didn't gain the speed back down the back straightaway. Way up the racetrack here in three and four. A lot of guys will be paying attention to how that affects his lap time. I don't know that it helped, Junior. The clock, I mean, it went the right direction as he got to the line, what so he maybe it did. What he gave up through the corner, he didn't gain back on the straightaway, so not enough of an advantage there. Qualifying for Group A continues from Kansas. Last week, no driver in the playoffs advanced to the round of 12 with a win because of this guy, Eric Jones. He won the race. He's not in the playoffs. But he certainly was excited about it. Told Marty right after the race how excited he was because I get a hat. It's because he drives for the king. <laughs> Look at that. Hat obtained. Richard Petty making the presentation there at Petty. And uh, I, I think it'll look good on Eric. Not sure it looks as good as it is on the king. No one Correct. can pull it off the way the king does. I got one of his hats. Yeah? Yeah. How, how do you pull it off? Oh, auction. No, do you, do you pull off the look? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about a Hall of Fame comment on uh, the hat? DJ, uh, down on Pit Road on the Peacock Pit Box, did you ever get a Richard Petty hat? You know, I do have one. Uh, the King sent me one uh, after I won a championship. And so, uh, yep, still have it to this day. And, uh, you know, I'm going to say something here. In the words of the great Ken Squire, that Jones boy did good last week. Yes, he did. And uh, did a great job. It was fun to watch him. So, guys, my, I, I've got a question about this. So, as we watch these different lines, but the majority up off the bottom of the racetrack from the middle to the top of the track in the corners, not going the shorter way around there, but when they get on the straightaway and come to the start finish line, then they're trying to shorten the straightaway, which you really can't do. Explain that to me. <laughs> Mind games, man. Trying to make it short. Yeah, I can see, you know, coming off turn four, right? And, and and hanging a left and trying to get to that line quicker, but it's yeah, the math doesn't always add up, does it? Chase Elliott in the green. We're comparing it to the fifth place car on the bubble. That is Justin Haley. So look at how much he gained through the middle of the corner and didn't really lose much on the straightaway. Because when you're coming to the checkered, you're only getting half of the straightaway. If the if the if the mm. gain for running the high side is down the next straightaway, but you're only going to get clocked to the to the middle of that straightaway, then running high, high, high in three and four is probably a disadvantage coming to the checker. And so you're saying is making the pass in turn yeah. one during the race is the deal. He ran high and you know, Elliot ran high in one and two, bottom of three and four. Good look from the Toyota on board. Kyle Busch on his qualifying run. Yeah, he was able to go to the throttle really early in one and two. You can see the speed down the back straightaway off Brad Keselowski. Tons of throttle over here. That's a good line. That's where I would run. That's where I think a lot of guys are probably paying attention and saying, "Okay, we're gonna we're gonna try to mark, we're gonna try to hit that line in three and four. And I think a similar line in one and two. I know right around the top is is more comfortable and it feels great, but I just think on new tires, you just can't make the advantage. Junior, I wonder if Chris Buescher and Harrison Burton had a little advantage going out early. I mean, they both first, second. Buescher, you know, by a tenth and a half, to you your, know, over second. I wonder if there's a little bit of an advantage going early. To your point, the you know, we did get some sun that's still kind of out around this racetrack and warming up this, you know, surface a little bit. You wouldn't think the track would be getting faster with the weather the way it is, so maybe that's affecting it. Taking just a little speed out of the track as the time goes on. I saw Blaney right there. He went way down in the middle of three and four. It's going to be a pretty good lap right here. Busher and Burton rolled out fifth and sixth if you're scoring at home. Kim? We're going to wear with Corey LaJoy, who's already aboard his race car. The sun is beating down now, so how's that going to affect your lap? 
It won't make it any better, but I think we got a pretty good uh, Circle B diecast Camaro here. Uh, hopefully we made the right adjustments here to qualify, but it's a long day tomorrow. But uh, put it on the fence and see what it's got. We're going to let him roll down the pit lane. The sun, it's playing peekaboo. It's out, and then it's behind the clouds. It's going to be like that for the rest of the session, guys. Cedric, as bad as he looked in practice, got a pretty decent lap going right here. He didn't have good speed in, in practice, but... How, how, who was it? Blaney went around? Not Blaney went around him. Somebody went around him, and uh, he couldn't keep up pace with him. It didn't appear. Yeah. P1 right there. So much for the track slowing down, or, or <laughs> you know, theory. I tell you what. Cindric is a qualifier. He can flat get it done. He was 31st in single lap times in practice, so there you go. Kyle Larson in the green through one and two and going the right direction. Should he stay in the green, he will bump Kyle Busch out of the top five. Ah, he's losing a little bit here. You saw him getting a throttle car drive up off the racetrack, off the bottom. Just a couple thousandths or hundredths. He lost there, but puts him P2. That'll be enough for one Kyle to move the other Kyle. Again, you're looking to stay top five here so you can run for the pole following Group B. And three fast cars left to go. Bubba Wallace, Chris Robel, Denny Hamlin, all three Toyotas. We saw a lot of speed from them in practice. And that's good news for Toyota and TRD. Remember, they had to do some work after some mechanical issues under the hood last week. The idea being to make the engines as durable as you can but get as much speed out of him as you can, and Bubba's in the green. Yeah, Bubba did go all the way to the bottom. Worked well for him. He's got a good lap right here. This will move Ryan Blaney to the bubble. P2, P2. That knocked Harrison Burton out. Liking the looks of that, and he can't get moved out of the top five with two to go. Yeah, with two to go, Blaney's, Blaney's gonna have to dodge some bullets right here. Two fast cars coming. Hoping the sun comes out and comes out strong. <laughs> Christopher our, Bell has other ideas. Our opinion was that this car might have been the best car on the racetrack in practice. Runs really high through the corner. Yeah, he put it right on the boards, entering turn one like you will. Look at this. It's a line you're going to see later in the race, and he's doing it right here in qualifying. Interesting. I'm surprised to see him run that high. I wonder, you know, what would the lap time, lap time have been had he ran the bottom? To the top, Christopher hey, Bell. Good job. That's going to drag a lot of people to the top, I think. I think if you just watch that lap that he made, and by the way, in practice, everyone ran the top. Yeah. So it's not a major adjustment for the drivers, but that's at that point. pace, I think that's going to drag some guys up there. I think he'd have ran in the 29th if he run the middle. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Three-time winner at Kansas, Denny Hamlin on track now and he's not started out where he wants and the clock is not going the right direction not at all but i don't think he can make it all back up down here continues to lose time see if he'd run the top man <laughs> maybe he'd run a flat yeah <laughs> i'm up here with the experts but so that is i mean listen that is our life yeah i mean seriously like yeah. you're sitting there and you're watching and you know what christopher bell just did but you have no idea what's in his car what setup he's got what air pressure he's got you don't have you don't know that you just know he went fast on the top so it makes you think is that where i should go there's the guy who was quickest that's bell Kansas Speedway, partly sunny, partly cloudy. Did it contribute to any of this? Probably not for Christopher Bell. Very fast in practice. He is quickest in the A group. He'll have a chance to run for pole, as will the others in the top five here. Uh, big question marks, Dale Jr., on Denny Hamlin. He was 11th quick there and ran last. Yeah, I'm shocked to see it. But, you know, when you look at practice speeds, 22nd in practice. So maybe they just got some work to do, but they have fast teammates. So I expect them to make the changes to make that car competitive. Rick Ware Racing's Cody Ware on track now in the 51. He had some big impacts last week. That wreck off turn two, that was a big wreck. He had two similar 
hits off of two that looked identical that ended up putting him out of the race. Another guy that was running good in practice, Alex Bowman Kemp's caught up with him down there. Yeah, when we come to Kansas, the talk is always the wind. Well, there's wind everywhere because we race outside. For somebody that doesn't understand, what makes it unique here at Kansas in the way it affects the cars? Yeah, I just feel like the weather is always changing here. And uh, we've seen it just in qualifying. The tracks change a lot when the sun came out for a little bit. Now we're back to pretty overcast. So, um, you know, whether the wind is affecting, like if you have a headwind in one end and a tailwind in the other end, your race car is going to do two completely different things. So thankfully our Ally 48s, but uh, Chevy's been pretty good so far. Um, we'll just have to wait and see how it does in qualifying. Really hard to pick what lane you're going to run. The 20 was really fast right up against the fence. Five was pretty fast kind of in the middle. So trying to decide what lane you're going to go with is, uh, is pretty tricky. I think William and I are even on different sides of where we think we should run. So uh, try to figure it out before we run and uh, see where it puts us. How late can you make that decision? Is it when you're taking the lap in the middle of the lap? When do you actually, is the last minute you can make the decision on the lane? When you turn it off the fence into turn one, that's when your decision gets made in a hurry. So. Uh, I don't know. I just we've been pretty free since we unloaded, and um, I don't know. Hopefully, I make the right choice. We'll see. We'll see. Alex Bowman was third fastest in his practice session. We'll see if he's got the speed here to make it to the next round of qualifying. That was a great question by Kim because it's one thing to say I can change my mind at the last minute, but it's a whole other thing to actually do that. When you sit in that car and you fire that thing up, you have a plan and you need to go execute on it. If you change that, if your team as you're going you know, toward turn one says, hey, somebody, that is a whole nother way you drive the race car. So I, I you know, I think you just got to have a plan, Junior, and stick to it. I don't think you could be changing your mind coming to get the green flag. Yeah, that's definitely true. I mean, during practice and during qualifying, uh, yeah, I, this the first group goes, right? We see a lot of guys run really well in the middle of the racetrack, and then the 20 goes out late and runs the wall. And everybody, you know, everybody, all the crew chiefs are going, all right, well, this is now some new information. And so as a driver, like you say, you need to make the decision right then. Am I staying with plan A or am I changing my plan? And you can't come down the front straightaway going, uh, what am I going to do when I get to the corner? Plan that Corey LaJoy chose was good. By the way, for Bowman and Byron, Bowman will get first shot at it. Byron will go out right behind him. So, again, to the point, there's no time really for Byron to think about that, or could he? Is William the kind of driver that can go, I'm going to switch that? Yeah, I mean, I, I'll i tell you, I've been, I've went down the front straightaway and not known what I was going to do, getting into the corner on, on cautions at a track that was line sensitive like this, and sometimes I didn't do what what I should have done and what I thought I was going to do. I did I did plan C. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it. You you have to, you have to make a choice and just stick with it and believe in it. You know, I think that's probably the best best way to do it. Is just to have a have a plan. If that plan's the plan and it works out well. You get an idea of how good LaJoy's lap was. Dylan was not able to eclipse it. And he will slot in second here. Again, we're looking for the top five through group B. We keep talking about the track and how it's changing and you know, LaJoy's lap, you know, Kyle Bush was eighth in the first group, and LaJoy actually went quicker than what Kyle Busch went. So uh, LaJoy put a good lap down. We just don't know how much the track is changing to help or hurt the drivers. Look at Truex. Pretty much running the high side of the racetrack. He's got a little bit of room between him and the wall, but a good lap. It's going to give everybody a new target to shoot for. And obviously, he backs up what everybody was curious about with the 20 cars line running the high side. what Bubba, or, uh, Ty Gibbs does here. Still trying to figure out who's in these cars, the 23 and the 45. You're doing better than me, though. <laughs> Ty Gibbs, yes, now running the 23. It's still his team, basically a number swap. And they did that so that the veteran driver, Bubba Wallace, could campaign the 45 to what they hope is an owner's championship. I love that move. I think it's great for Bubba Wallace. I think it gives him some experience of racing in the playoffs, having to step your game up. Oh, and he told Kim, though, he told Kim, no, I'm treating the same way, you know. So, Kim, I don't know these drivers sometimes. We think one way, they think another. 
And you never know what's behind a driver's mind. Uh, Kyle Larson will move on to the next round, fourth fastest in his qualifying. I was walking around your car, though. You got just a teeny tiny little scuff on the right rear. Did you get a little greedy in practice? What happened? Uh, yeah, I just got the wall a little bit off of four. Not, not bad at all. So, um, yeah, everything checked out fine, and I felt fine in practice. Or, sorry, qualifying. I felt really good in practice as well, but even qualifying, everything felt fine after I got into the wall. So, hittercars.com Chevy's been good. Uh, I just got to figure out like what line to carry the most speed and uh, factoring in distance and all that so um, yeah we'll see probably switch some things up here for the next round and see if I can go a little bit better. Kyle Larson telling us what every driver is telling us I feel like it's just a broken record we got to find what line is the fastest. Indeed Kim new colors for Micah McDowell this week keep an eye on him he's on the bubble as we head to break. Qualifying continues from Kansas Speedway on a playoff weekend for the NASCAR Cup Series. One down, two to go in round one. Kansas smack dab in the middle. Kevin Harvick needs something good to happen after last week. We'll see how he does on his single lap qualifying run. Let's ride along with him. Listen to what he does to the throttle in one and two, compared to three and four. Wow, that takes some commitment. He just, he just gave it a little breath, getting into turn three, never came all the way out of the gas. Went right back to it. That will move Michael McDowell out of fifth and continue the additions to the top five here. Clouds are back out. Sun has hidden for the moment. Chase Briscoe on track. Kim? Well, Austin Cedric was 33 on the board during practice, and now we're looking at the pylon second in group one. What was the difference for you guys, and maybe was your focus a little different from practice to qualifying? Oh, I'd say pretty big change with the weather as well as the tire this, this weekend going into, going into practice, and we had to make a lot of changes. So obviously we were able to make the right changes on our Snap-on 4 Mustang, have some speed. Um, it's a high commitment qualifying session. I love that about this place with this car. and. Um, not too many places you're almost wide open against the fence. What's the line there between getting greedy along the fence but also trying to make a fast lap? I think you just define driving a race car. Simple as that, guys. Uh, Austin Cedric, P2 in his group of qualifying. And we listened to Harvick breathe the throttle a little bit. And, you know, as a driver, when you're going down in the corner, you're pushing yourself to do as little of that as possible but too much can get yourself in big trouble. Austin Dillon looking high in three and four and finding some speed there. Clock going in the right direction. Yeah, we, we keep talking about the racetrack and you know, this racetrack is not losing speed. If anything, it's gaining speed. Austin Dillon went to the top of the board. Well, the sun's went away. Now back to full cloud cover. Track temp dropping. Grip going up. That lap was nearly six tenths better than his practice time. So nice bit of speed finding there for Austin Dillon. That the 20 wasn't the best car. This car here was, at least in Jeff's opinion, the best car. Great 10 and 15 lap average for Ross Chastain in practice. Look at this lap. Great looking lap. This is going to be big. That will take him to the top of the board. Wow, an 87. <laughs> so the cut line in group one, talking about track, cut line in group one was a 30-26. Currently, it's a 30-17 with still five, six more cars to go. So you're saying that cloud cover has helped, Jeff. A little bit quicker here in group, group B. You got to lay a lap down right here to make the top five. Daniel Suarez. Oh, he's right on the line. I'm sure if he's going to be able to move Harvick. 
little bit of smoke out of the back of that car uh, in, in the middle of one. Looks like it might have bottomed out just a little bit. Try to get the back of the car as low as they can get it. In order to? Make grip, make downforce. You want to speed that air up underneath the car, let it start underneath that front splitter, then get to that rear diffuser and just make downforce. So different than it used to be, right? You used to have the front of the car sucked down to the track. Now you need to get that downforce for the rear diffuser, right? So you can use all that grip. Yeah, you can see it. Look at the back of the car squatted. This is the opposite of what you would have, would have wanted to do in the past. This is the lap right here also. Really good lap. Second for Alex Bowman. Guys, I think this is the Christopher Bell effect more than it is weather-related uh, sitting down here. Yeah, we got more cloud cover than we did have. Temperature doesn't seem to have changed that much. I just think that a lot of these guys, once they saw Bell run that lap up high, that they've committed that that's what they were going to do and making it work. That is a great point. Everybody's at the top now. Point coming from Hall of Famer Dale Jarrett down on the Peacock pit box. Part of our discussion up here and with drivers on pit road, what would you take? Byron is going to take that high line as well, and he's going to be in the green. He'll move out Briscoe. Junior, you talked about the advantage of going out and practice in group two. Well, there's an advantage in going out in group two and qualifying also. You see somebody do something that works to kind of pave the way to let you know what you need to do. And think about the guys that were in that first group that did not run this line, wondering what if, wishing they'd had this information. Listen to the throttle commitment, Tyler Reddick, down the back straightaway. See what he does here down in turn three and four as far as the throttle. A just, lot of it. Yeah, never off the throttle entirely, just brakes, you know, bring the pedal back just a bit to get the car to rotate. And no question what line Tyler Reddick would choose. He goes to the top of the board. So this cut line, Austin Dillon ran a 05 in fifth. Busher in fifth ran a 26. So two tenths of a second wow. between group one and group two. That is a lot. Logano was in group two in practice for group B. And he was 13th overall on fastest lap. A really good one and two. And he's up as high as anyone's been. And he'll put his Ford into the top five. That puts Byron fifth. Austin Dillon will not get to go in this final round. You talked about those guys in group one that didn't run the top. Well, now they also, they got to make that adjustment. And they don't know what their car is going to do up there. This second group, they know what their car is going to do and what adjustments they need to make, Kim. That's right. And for a guy like Chase Briscoe, who didn't get to move on, you were watching the screen, kind of watching your name go down the pylon. What are the what ifs for you? Like, what could you have done differently in your run? I really don't know. That's a problem. I felt like I was for sure going to be safe when I ran that lap. And, I mean, our group was definitely, I mean, all them guys picked up a ton of speed. I don't really know. I drove it into one pretty far. I guess I could probably do that different. But, yeah, other than that, I thought that was going to be a pretty good lap. And, yeah, it just wasn't good enough. So, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like our Magical Vacation Planners Ford drives pretty good, and I feel like that's going to be half the battle. We had really good long run speed there at the end of practice. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised because I really did think it was going to be okay. And, uh, yeah, it just wasn't good enough. So, yeah, go into uh, tomorrow and see what we can do. Looking at tomorrow, you're below that cut line, uh, minus 10 points. How does that affect the approach to the race and what you're going to need out of the car? Yeah, I mean, we just can't. I mean, like, we've used our mulligan now at, uh, at Darlington, so we just have to go in and not make any mistakes. And, yeah, I mean, just uh, I, I feel like our car is a lot better placed than it was last week. So I feel like we're going to have something that can go up there and compete, hopefully. Just uh, there's going to be a lot of, of chaos, I think, on the restarts. And this we're running so close to the wall for 400 miles. Eventually, guys are going to start making mistakes, and we just got to be the, the guy that doesn't do that. It's shaping up to be a great race tomorrow, guys. Sounds like it, Kim. That's Chase Briscoe. He did not make the top 10, will not move on. Here are the drivers that did. And interestingly, in Group B, all six of the top fastest were quicker than Christopher Bell. How will that work out?
These 10 will run for the pole at Kansas Speedway when we return. Speeds are up at Kansas Speedway, and the practice and qualifying session has been impressive so far, especially in the last group that went out. They were very, very quick, and now they, along with five from Group A, will get to qualify for the pole here at Kansas Speedway. Getting them lined up. Over to the right, Jeff, right? They get a quick chance to cool those cars down, the, one that went in group, the ones that went in Group B. That's right. They try to give them time so that their cars and tires can cool down like the Group 1 tires can. This is one time that Group 1 may be a little bit of an advantage because the tires have a chance to be a little bit cooler, Kim. Well, let's find out from Tyler Reddick, top of the board in his group. Jeff Burton was saying maybe Group 1 has an advantage because they get to cool their tires off for longer. Agree? Disagree? Maybe they do. I guess we're going to find out. Um, yeah, this place is has continued to change. You know, it it's definitely track you move around um, all all the all the different grooves that it has. It's uh, definitely a type of track that lane choice is is, is many, but uh, the fall off still isn't as is as wild as some of the tracks that we we're at. Certainly not like Darlington last weekend, but uh, yeah, guarantee rate Chevrolet was really good. Um, man, we're getting ready to figure out you know what little adjustments, if any, we want to make. I um, you know the pace pickup that last tenth. It seemed well. I guess it was. I ran a 31 or 30-10, and I guess three tenth pickup. Um, yeah, just the amount of on throttle time that you have is a pretty big adjustment. And um, thankfully, we got it pretty good. You know, we were able to put a good lap down and get to this next round. So we got a feel for it. You know, I think based off last year, you could run about the same speed both rounds. But certainly, um, I think I think I could run a little bit faster. So that's what we're going to try and do. All right, we're going to see what Tyler can do in round two of qualifying for the Cup Series. He, he wanted to leave it open-ended there, Jeff. He didn't necessarily agree with you, but he's being a little bit coy there. Well, that's because he's in the second group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, you know, I, th I think the big challenge is, like, what is the pace? What does it need to be? And and uh, he talked about tire fall off. Uh, that, to me, is you just don't know. you gotta you got to send it down in there and hope it sticks. You know they're going to have to run the top. We learned that already. Joey Logano getting ready to make his attempt. We'll see what happens when we come back. It'll be qualifying for the pole from Kansas. It's calm right now at Kansas Speedway, but things are going to change here in a moment as 10 drivers get ready to run for pole position in anticipation of tomorrow's 400 miler here. Second race of the 2022 playoffs. Dale Jarrett down in the Peacock pit box. DJ, what are you looking for out of this round of 10? Well, just uh, going to make sure that all the drivers are going to run around the top. That's what we saw with all the speed catch up here. I can't imagine somebody wouldn't do that. Uh, maybe go to the middle and, and see what they do. But that might be where they're comfortable. So it would be interesting to watch that. And, and Tyler Reddick, I was kind of interested in his comment there. Did he think that maybe a little heat in this tire might not be a bad thing when he goes back out there? Optimism. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean. Look at here. It did not run the wall. Not on the fence. Dale Jarrett bringing up a couple of good points here. So if he's the only one that doesn't run the fence, it needs to be really fast. It will set the standard. And again, just like the first round, they get one lap. And there it is. 30.2. Now, same set of tires, right? So there's a little bit of speed gone there. Well, we think. We're, we know we're not real sure. That'd be my excuse, right? Yeah, well. <laughs> I bet Larson's going to be on the boards here. Let's see. Enters high, commits to that top line right on the wall. Drifts away from the wall for corner exit a little bit. see the advantage it didn't help his speed entering turn one or in the middle it helped the speed on the back straightaway same thing here no speed advantage on corner entry but center off is where it starts to take advantage rough slam down to the apron there and crossing the stripe Ooh, he will be just barely better than chris busher and that's right fast faster than he ran in the first session still though these 
Tyler Reddick, Chastain, those guys were in the 29.8s. You have to imagine that you're going to have to run in the 29s to get this pole. Going from 10th to quickest in the first round of qualifying. So this would be uh, Bubba Wallace, third from the bottom there. See if he can piece together a good lap for the 45 group. He ran a 17 in the first session, so entering turn three, he was definitely ahead of that pace. Losing some now, though. Yeah, he backed up the entry, but it gained, didn't bring the game back on corner exit. Kind of wondering what happened there in the middle of three and four or throughout that corner to give up a tenth. To the top, nonetheless, Bubba Wallace quickest so far at Kansas. I would think he probably got tight since, you know, we didn't see the car move around or anything. He probably just didn't turn the way he wanted to. Now the sun's popped out. <laughs> just all of a sudden it came out. High line for Austin Sendrick through one and two. And again, Sendrick, as none of these drivers, they didn't run that high line in that first group. The first one that did it was Bell. He's going to keep it high through three and four. And he's going to stay red. Gaining a little bit back here against Bubba Wallace, who struggled a little bit in three and four. You can see the difference, but still not fast enough. Qualifying has been a big part of this team's success this year. When the race gets going, they don't have a ton of speed, but they have track position, and they, and they do a good job of keeping it. All these guys running pretty much the same as they did in round one. This will be the interesting one. Christopher Bell, quickest in the A group in round one, but then he was bested by every of the top six drivers in the B group. A lot of speed entering three. Clock going, continuing in the right direction. Good lap for Christopher Bell. That's all I got, buddy. <laughs> I agree. That looked like he was getting everything he could. That's a great feeling. When you go out there and you make a Q lap, and you know you got the car to the limit, you know there was nothing left. Now, you don't want to get beaten by that, but if you do, then you, at night you go home and you're like, okay, I did my job today. Dale Jarrett, we see the high line runners uh, taking advantage of that. Still yet to see if the Tyler Reddick slightly warmer tires will play out here. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what you're going to have to do other to beat Christopher Bell other than to run almost wide open around here. We saw Bell just barely be out of the gas down in, in one and two. and uh, But Reddick, we saw when he ran that fast lap uh, just a few minutes ago uh, in that first round, he, he barely cracked the throttle at all. I mean, he never did come out uh, of the gas completely. So is he willing to do whatever it's going to take? And, and that's going to be put it up there and stay in the throttle all the way around. That's the only way that you're going to go run faster than what Christopher Bell just did. And, DJ, we've talked about how this weather, the coming of the, the sun in and out of the clouds, more of a mind game or more of a physics reality. What did you experience as a driver? Uh, I, you know, I just always felt, uh, unless it was something over a longer period of time that could actually cool this racetrack down, I always felt like that most of it was in my mind and any other driver's mind that when you see cloud cover and that sun goes away just a little bit, it just gives you a little bit more confidence inside that, hey, I, this is the time that, that I need to take advantage of, of this opportunity. Don't know that it ever really did. I think it probably takes 10, 15 minutes to actually cool the racing surface down at all. But if a driver can just gain a little bit of confidence in that by seeing the cloud cover, then that's worth a little bit. That's our Hall of Famer, Dale Jarrett, down on the Peacock pit box. He has seen Christopher Bell go to the top here. Jeff Burton, uh, what do you think? More mind game or more reality? Well, it, you know, I, I, agree with, I agree with DJ. A lot of it is, you know, as soon as you see a cloud, it takes time for the track to cool down or to heat up, right? And we as drivers are like, yes, that's going to be an advantage. Oh, no, that's going to be a disadvantage. And speaking of that, you know, we've got some sun right now. It's come back out, and, you know, there's cars. The drivers are sitting in the cars left to go. Uh, the next car is is the 24 car, William Byron, and he's sitting there looking at the sun, and he's thinking, ah, <laughs> man, come on, let's get going, because he just knows the longer that sun sits on the racetrack, it will bring that tempo. Charlotte, North Carolina's William Byron in the playoffs. Can he be champion this year? We will find that out a few weeks from now in Phoenix, Arizona. He may or may not be in the final four by that time. We shall see. 
Today, it's about getting the pole at Kansas Speedway. Sixth car to go out. Came to the line really well. Right on the edge there, good exit clock, just not wavering too much. Let's see what he picks up here. Seems like three and four has been a challenge for these guys. Some are hitting it, some are missing it. Byron, Wallace didn't get through there probably as well as they'd like. Byron was trending to match his lap from the round before at a 31 or a 30 flat and then lost it all down there, Jeff. You, you mentioned it, guys maybe getting a little tight down there. Starting to see a little bit of grip loss in the front tire. Bowman wrapping a little bit lower, not quite as high as some of these other guys, particularly on entry. Worked well though, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Not hurting him at all. Ran a 96, a 29-96 in his first round. He was right on top of that down the back straightaway. Alex Bowman to the top with three drivers remaining. Nice work, man. P1. Step four. Good job, guys. We'll see where that puts us. So it seems like if you do everything right, you can run about what you ran the first round. If you try to get more, you're gonna it's gonna cost you down here in three and four. Joey Logano, a lonely Ford in the top five of group B. We'll see what he has to offer. And through turns one and two, it's not the right way. He ran a 91, and as you see, trying to gain back a little bit compared to Bowman's 96. Got a bunch of it back. Will that continue? Clock going in the right direction. Joey Logano, has he chosen the right line? Does he have the speed? He'll come to the line here at Kansas, and it will be first for Logano. Two drivers left. Nice job, 29.93, C1 right now. It's really good, three or four. He sailed it down into turn three. He was able to go all the way back to the throttle. Joey Logano on the pole last week at Darlington. Can he make it two straight? Ross Chastain trying to have something to say about that. Enters high, leaves it high. You know, it's interesting with this car, uh, the previous cars, Junior, you can see a guy give up a little bit of speed in on corner entry and try to and make it back up. But this car, it's just harder to do that. There's so much entry speed that everybody's carrying. Just a little more of a challenge. Final contender for the pole at Kansas, it will be Tyler Reddick. And look at the green. This young driver has embraced the high side of these tracks ever since he entered NASCAR. Could be a big payoff today. He's got it. Good margin for Tyler Reddick to the line now. And you're going to see the eight car on the top of the board. Tyler Reddick pole position at Kansas. What a lap. Let's go, guys. What a day. Way to get it started. How about that? And he says what a day, but just practice and qualifying. Dale Jr., when you put it all together like that, you do everything right, that's big confidence. Yeah, and I think for this team at a track like this, they know they're good at the road courses. But to be a contender in the playoffs, you have to be great everywhere, and they're starting to see that pace there. They're starting to see real, real playoff contending pace at all of these racetracks. You start believing. When you can put a complete day together like this, you start really believing, hey, man, we could actually do this. Why not us? Hey, guys, I watched this team last Sunday night at Darlington. They were, their pit was right below uh, our pit box, and they were not good for a good portion of that hmm. race. They kept working and working on that car and finally came out of there with an outstanding night, and that's what champions and championships are made from, are taking nights and days that aren't your best and making something of it, and then that momentum carries over to a pole here at Kansas now. 
Such a good point, Dale Jarrett. Uh, Randall Burnett, the crew chief, all the men and women who put this car together back at Richard Childress Racing, those that worked on it throughout the race last week. <laughs> Andy Petrie there, director of competition for RCR, congratulating the driver. Let's catch up with Kim. And Joey Logano, P2, second though, front row starting spot in the playoffs. As you watched Tyler's lap, could you have done anything differently during yours? I haven't seen his lap, but uh, in mine, you know, I, I thought we had a pretty good lap. Our, our car was a little tighter than it was the first run, and um, maybe just, it was so good the first run, I, I hated to adjust on it too much, and I probably steered Paul a little bit in the wrong direction there, and um, uh, didn't didn't really adjust enough. So, um, so proud of the Shell Pennzoil team. We picked up a lot from practice and, uh, and, and laying down a couple of quick laps there, a um, couple front row starts in a row. That first pit stall is pretty big here, though. I wish we had that, but we'll still get a good one with where we're at. Joey Logano, three-time Kansas winner in the Cup Series. And, Kim, you mentioned it, front row in the playoffs. That's good. Joey Logano will be there. We'll be back to talk to the man who did it, Tyler Reddick, when we come back. Good look at Kansas City and just outside the Kansas Speedway here since 2001 with the NASCAR Cup Series. NASCAR Xfinity Series later this afternoon and of course the trucks raced here last night. The eight car fastest in qualifying in the final round where it mattered, Kim Kuhn, and you're with that man. That's right, and the last time we saw him on the pole this year was at Indy Road Course, which he won. So car fast in qualifying here in Kansas. What do you have for tomorrow's race? Oh man. Um... I, I think we're in pretty good shape in, in practice. It, it took off fast. I was really happy with the car. And um, we, as much as you want to adjust on it sometimes, you know, I felt like it was best to just run it out and get a feel for our car as long as we could. And uh, certainly got a pretty good feel for it. You know, it, it definitely likes the, the top two or three grooves of this racetrack. But just really happy of this entire performance today by everybody on our Guaranteed Rate Chevrolet. Everyone on this eight team works really, really hard. And uh, we had a good weekend at Darlington, and we're off to a good start again this weekend, too. You were joking. We were standing here before we went on air, and uh, your, your pit crew is going to pit for the Xfinity race, and you said you guys have a really long walk because you'll get that first pit stall. How big of an advantage is that, especially here? Man, uh, any anytime you can get it, it's great, and, and certainly, you know, anything we can do to stack the odds in our favor, I'll absolutely take it. So to get it done um, is really cool. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's my first oval uh, poll, so I'm really excited about that, and it's crazy. I think my Xfinity poll, my first Xfinity poll came here too. So I hope I get to another pedal car because my son Bo will really be excited about that. Congratulations. Thank you. Tyler Reddick, lots of good mojo here for the driver of the number eight car at Kansas. Kim, I would say so. And uh, our, our smart guys confirmed that is his first oval poll. Let's take a look at the starting grid here. There's the oval pole winner, Tyler Reddick on row one with Joey Logano. See a lot of guys in the playoffs. Bubba Wallace, the only one in the top four rows that's not in the playoffs but we're seeing a lot of guys that we didn't really anticipate having speed or guys that weren't real fast at practice qualify toward the front the guys that we expect to do well struggling back here chase elliott kyle bush all kind of back mid pack and denny very, hamlin very curious on that junior yeah it is it makes you wonder you know really what kind of speed these guys might have for the race tomorrow 36 cars in the race tomorrow, Dale Jarrett. And you saw how big the smile got on Tyler Reddick's face when Kim asked him about pit stall one. Yeah, no doubt that uh, that gives the driver a good feeling. Know that you have the preferred spot with that. But the level of commitment from all of those drivers, uh, those 10 drivers, to go back out uh, the second time and try to top what they did the first time, and Tyler Reddick being the best at it, really impressive. And I think it's a, a sign that he's going to be somebody they're going to have to deal with tomorrow if they plan winning this race. Appreciate your contributions down there today, GJ. Uh, Jeff Burton, what do you think? Uh, good looking eight car on the front there as we get ready for the rest of the afternoon here. Yeah, this is kind of racetrack he thrives on. It's going to be right against the wall all day long. So a really good start for that team. Yeah, and I think if you're, you know, you're, if you're a cup driver and your car doesn't work anywhere, but on the wall, you're in big trouble. Because you're to be able to make passes, you're going to have to pass guys low. You're going to have to get underneath them. The car can't do that. You're in for a long day. Coming up next, the Dale Jr. download with guest Ty Gibbs. Make sure you can always get more NASCAR coverage on NBCSports.com. Thanks for joining us today.